Oh, PC Smoker back again. And some of you, especially West of the Rockies, may have read in the papers that tomorrow, which is Sunday, May 20, you're going to have a solar happening. And that is when the moon comes across the sun's face, but it won't completely block it out. It'll just leave a ring on it, which is called an annular eclipse. And, of course, that's due to the fact that the moon is not quite close enough to the sun to, in its orbit around Earth, to, to completely block it out, make a total solar eclipse. Annually, eclipse at most 94% of the sun will st still be visible, which means you can't see it with the naked eye. But let's just leave a nice little ring, which is kind of neat. And something like that happened to over here back in 94. Of course, of course, some of you go, how come, how come, you know, two weeks ago they had big, bright, big moon that came close to Earth. How come this happened? Well, the closer it gets to Earth when it's a full moon, the farther it'll get away when it's a new moon. So, that's the reason why this is an annual eclipse and a completely total solar eclipse. So, right here I have my right here I have my Casada Tribudo I pick up Garden International and that's just what an annual eclipse looks like at the beginning it's just like it came off of a VCR, so I got to switch over the bit over on this. So that's what it all starts out as. And I saw partially, which will, which will, which we would be able to see here in Illinois tomorrow, except it's going to cloud over and rain. So all we're going to see, so if it wasn't going to be cloudy, what we'll see is a is the sun partially eclipsed while it's setting? And the further west you go along the path, um, you see more and more eclipse until more and more partial eclipse until you see the um, moon right in the middle of the sun. Um, there we go. Let me speed up the time here. Now, the way I did back then is I had a video camera pointing towards the sun. Well, actually, it was the mirror that was reflecting the sun. And in between it, between the mirror and the camera, was inside it was a camera was inside a box and it was in front of the camera welder shield glass number 12 14 is the best you want to look with your naked eye but of course most people say don't look at it with the naked eye unless you have some sort of protection like welder's glass number 14 and mylar glass as well some um, planetariums that might be in the path of this will probably have some available so you can look at it. Otherwise you have to use the good old narrow shoe box and turn you back towards the sun. And as you can tell here it gets even away more. Until one more, one more shot here, okay. Until 
It looks like the moon had created the letter C from from the sun and speed her up. Do a little cow adjusting. And then As the moon goes directly across the sun's disk, uh, you would notice that at the uh, beginning of the annual, annular part, since you notice, you can't tell from here because the reflection off the, the reflection off the mirror. But if I had the way, if I had my, the way of, if I had if I knew then or I know now and all that sh shit as um, what you see there, so you'll be able to see the mountains on the moon as it go as the moon goes in across the sun, and that's where you get Bailey's beads from from those mountains. And then you would tell the moon is not is not full disc. I mean, not not a smooth disc. It does have mountains on its rim. That you see that you will see the beads right there. And there you would have an angular. And there is what you call an angular eclipse ring around the moon. Or sun ring, or ring of fire. When this happened, this lasted about six minutes. And you see a nice, a, a perfect ring. And from this distance, the sun, 94% of the sun was blocked by the moon. And of course, like I said, the closer the moon gets to Earth, the more percentage, less percentage of the sun be shown. Because I think in Atlanta, back in 83, only 1% of the sun was shown. So I had that on CNN. And over here it was just partial eclipse. But you no. Know, the closer the closer the moon gets towards Earth, of course, the annual eclipse would come a total eclipse. But this would become the norm in the uh, far future. At least 10,000, 12,000 years from now, because the moon is pulling away from Earth one inch a year. So eventually, this is all we're going to see the moon coming across the sun, and you'll no longer be able to see the corona. And let's just speed it up. There we go. And and there you go. And the moon goes out. And that's that's was. And that's what an angular eclipse looks like. And, like I said, it's not recommended you look directly at the sun unless you have some protection. Usually, mylar glasses work. 
Also, um, Wilder's class trade number 14 is the best. I should know because I'm a welder, so. And when you're welding, um, the light is more like the sun, so you want to make sure you get some of that. And also, not only for the eclipse on tomorrow, Sunday, but also on Friday, June 8th, when the planet Venus will go across the sun's face. And that will start a few hours before sunset. And the farther west you live, the more you get to see it. And of course, I think you live around Hawaii or something like that, you will be able to see the whole thing. You'll be able to see Venus go across the sun's disk. But for us here in Illinois and you know, for the continental U.S., uh, we'll see the sun and Venus set at the same time. So that'll be neat. That'll be nice. Also, probably, like with June, you know, it's going to be hot and humid, so it might get hot and humid. So, which means that maybe about 30 minutes or less before sunset, you'll be able to see the sun find protection because it be so nice and hazy. It'd be, you know, it should be a red ball. Things are going to have a little black dye on it. So, that, that'll be Venus. So, uh, basically, That's about it. You know. And hopefully y'all y'all be able to see it. Uh, we will be able to see this. Whatever it's gonna happen to the sun because it's gonna be because it's supposed to cloud up and rain, so that's what's gonna happen. And uh And you know, you can see not you know those type of solar eclipses not too frequently, but you can go somewhere on Earth to see it. But after, but for seeing Venus go across the sun, uh, it's best to do it this century because it won't happen again until the next century. Sometimes I forget. I think it's twenty one seventeen or tw somewhere in the twenty seven. 2110s or the 2130s, somewhere one of those two decades, but it'll be a long time to see it. So, and of course, yeah, um, if you can't see it on the, if you can't see it in person, well, you naturally all the news places will have it on, you know, for the late night news and early morning news and all that. So, for both the eclipse and Venus, so. If you miss it, if you miss it in person, you'll be, you'll be able to see what you miss on TV, which ain't all, which ain't that great, but that's the way it is. So that's about it. So until then, keep the home brows burning and scars burning, and keep the sunlight out of your eyes. See you next time. <laughs>